Hello, my name is Brendan Enrich, and I'd like to welcome you to Dev Chatter Basics. We're going to be discussing extension methods in C Sharp. If you're brand new to C Sharp, you may not have used an extension method before. However, if you've been using it a while, I'm sure you've come across them even without realizing what they are. In this episode, you'll learn what extension methods are, how to use them, why you might want to use them, and how to create your own. So, what are extension methods? Well, they're static methods that can be used like regular methods. You define an extension method separately from the type it extends, but to anyone using the extension method, it looks like it's part of the type that it's using. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. We're going to take a look at basics of extension methods with a simple console application. Remember, the first thing that you want to do, no matter what you're doing in C Sharp or any other programming language, run your code even if all you've got is just a basic Hello World application. Let's go ahead and run this with a .NET run and specify the project we want to run. Now you can see that the code is run and it says welcome to Dev Chatter Basics and that's about it. So I mentioned a couple of things about extension methods. The first one being that an extension method is a static method and that we use it as if it were a regular method on the object. Now we also talked about how you've probably come across these before. The place that you would have done that is most likely in the system.link namespace. That's L-I-N-Q like I've written right here. And the link namespace gives us a couple of things. So I'm going to create a simple array in C-sharp. We'll do an array of numbers to begin with. And now that I've created this array of numbers, I might want to get a subset of them based on the values of these numbers. So I wrote them in order, but maybe we don't know the order. With link, I can do some simple operations like a where, and I can say grab the numbers where uh, the number, number is greater than three. And this will get me the four and the five. So if I were to do a for each loop, and inside my for each loop, I put in this code that we just wrote. That will say for each number in the numbers collection where the number is greater than three. Now, these do use the same symbol for number and numbers, but they don't have to. So I could write my lambda expression like this. If you're not familiar with the lambda syntax, don't worry about that too much. Just know that this is how you define it. Essentially, I'm saying this is each one of the numbers and include in the set any number where its value is greater than three. So this should give us back the numbers four and five. So we'll go ahead and say console write line and we'll print out the number. And now when I run this code, so I'm going to come down here into the command and run it again, we should see our hello world message as well as four and five. And we do. Okay, so we can use these extension methods. There are other ways to use them as well that we've seen, but I want to show you that they're only sort of there. Now, if you've used link, you've probably come across this before already. So let's say that I wanted to do numbers.first, and that is a link method. Notice that uh, there are no squiggly lines around that, so it thinks that that code is valid at least. So we'll do numbers.first and we'll print it out. We'll do it like this. When we run this, we should end up with the number one printed and then I'm gonna scroll up to the top and I'm going to remove the using system.link. And you'll notice we no longer have like valid C sharp. We're getting this red underline. If I try to run it, we're gonna get a compiler error about it. And it's gonna tell us that the type integer array doesn't have a first. Now remember, I said that extension methods are static methods that only look like they are regular methods on an object. So we essentially have this first method that looks like it applies to an int array. Remember, numbers is an int array here. That's the type, and I can display that right here just to make sure that's clear. So that's an int array. It doesn't have a first. So let's see what methods it does have. 
If we type in this and take a look at the IntelliSense, you'll see this is the set of methods that exist on the int array with our current version of .NET and C Sharp. Okay, let's go ahead and add back in System Link, and we'll see what's available. So System Link is a namespace, not an actual class itself. So every extension method class that exists inside of the System Link namespace will be made available to us. So let's have a look. Numbers dot, and all of a sudden, we have a lot more options. This is way more. Okay, so it's clearly giving us things like aggregate, all, any, uh, add the as enumerable. Uh, we get all these things like element at, or the first or default. Uh, we get different pieces like min max, or of type. So a whole bunch of additional methods get added as soon as we add this in. Okay, let's get rid of that because we want to write some of our own extensions because that is a little bit more interesting. So, what can we do? Well, for starters, we can make an int extension. So I created a folder already, already over here that's just called extensions, and in it I am going to create a new file, and we're going to call it int extensions. Well, you can decide how you want to do this, whether you, whether you organize based on the type that it modifies, or whether you've got a cohesive set that you want to do, regardless of what type it's applying to. That's all up to you. You can organize it however you like. First thing I'm going to do is I want to make this a basic class. So, class. This is going to be int extensions. Now, this needs a namespace. I'm also going to make it public and static. Remember, static methods, so since they're only going to be static methods, I can make a static class. We're also going to create a namespace, and the namespace that we're going to use is myapp.extensions. And I think that's going to work pretty well because, well, my app is the default namespace here, and extensions, well, we're making an extension, so why not? Let's go ahead and fix all the spacing, fix this. There we go, myapp.extensions. So now we need to make a public static method. And for this one, I'm thinking that we want to make an isBetween. So remember I said that it's a static method, but it looks like it's actually a regular method on an object. And we said this is going to be applying to an integer, so we're going to make this an int ex extension. So we're going to say this int number, and then that's how we're going to set this one up. Then what we're going to do is we need to indicate some other things. So we're making a little extension that instead of doing a comparison of is it lower than this, we're just going to make a quick little extension because we might want to check that our number is between two values. So we're going to say int lower bound and int upper bound. We could answer whether this is inclusive or exclusive using a comment on this method, but I think we'll put it into the variable name as well. We can make that comment as well, but I think this will make it a little bit easier. So let's say inclusive lower, and then the upper bound will say inclusive upper, because I think that'll make it a little bit clear what this is. Now, I've got my fonts really large so that you can all read this text, so I do have to new line there as well. Let's go ahead and say return number is, so it's in between if it is greater than or equal to the lower value, so we're going to say greater than or equal to the inclusive lower, and it is less than or equal to our inclusive upper bound. And don't worry, I mean the logic is pretty easy here. So it needs to be greater than our lower bound, less than our upper bound, and that's all we need here. So this should work. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Keep in mind, I used the this keyword here. The this keyword being applied in this spot to a static method is what makes this an extension. It tells you that you can call this on an int and it will be treated as the first parameter. So, I can do this in a couple of ways and I'm going to show you both. It's a static method, so let's say int extensions, and actually I need to include the namespace. So let's include the namespace first, myapp.extensions. Once that's included, I can say int extensions dot is between, and I can say five, and we'll say that five is between five and ten. And this should be true. 
when we run this. Now, so far I've done nothing weird, this is just a static method call, but we can change this. I can get rid of this initial 5, and I can put it here. And I can say 5 is between that. And I don't have to just do it on the literal value, I could store this in a variable if I wanted. So we'll say number, so int number equals 5, and we can still run this code. But you see how that reads so much easier saying number is between 5 instead of saying is between 5, 5, 10. This will make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So I like reading it this way. Now keep in mind I did say we have to include the using, so if this disappears you'll see that we get that red squiggly again because it's telling us that won't compile and indeed if we run it, it won't compile. That is the basics of how we write an extension method. So in this case, I've made a convenient little addition to integers. If I need to do stuff with integers around, I can use this instead, and then I don't have to write the code of like less than, greater than. I can just use an is between. So we can do these kinds of things in a lot of other places as well. We can add additions to uh, our I enumerables. That's actually what all the link methods are. You can write your own methods that do the same things. We could also do a set of string extensions. So let's make a string extension and show how that could work as well. So we'll do a public static class, string extensions, because there are a couple of string extensions I like having as well. For example, uh, I like having a public equals, and I say this string a string b. So for this type of check, again, because this is an equality check, it's actually very common to just have them be a and b because it doesn't really matter what the values are, it's just does one equal the other. So we don't usually worry about the names, so don't be concerned about the single letter variable names, it just, uh, they, it really doesn't matter here. So but we're going to say return a dot equals and we're going to say b, we're going to pass this in, and then we're going to do a comparison type right here. So string comparison, and we're going to say ordinal ignore case. This is the code that we don't want to write everywhere. a equals b string comparison ordinal ignore case. Because this value is so long, that's why we don't really like putting it in. So I find it a little bit easier to just say equals insensitive, right? So it's case insensitive. This is the way I write it. If you don't like equals ins, you could write insens or insensitive or whatever you want. You could say, you know, ignore case. You could say equals ignore case if you like. I just write ins because it's a convention that I and the teams I work with know. So I just write equals ins because uh, I know that that's an equals insensitive check. Let's take a look at how it works. So we're going to do another console write line like we did before, but this time we're going to write like this. We're going to say Brendan equals insensitive Brendan. And this should come back as true. Now again, I need to make sure that I have included my namespace up at the top. So as soon as the myapp extensions namespace is there, this should be able to run. And now when we run it, ta-da, it says true. We could also put in something else and confirm that we get false when we put in something else. So dev chatter does not equal that. However, we could put in Brendan, and we could put in Brendan. Whoops. And when we run this, true, there we go. Uh, if I put an exclamation point on the end and run it, again, we get false now. So there we go. And switch it back, and true. Excellent. We can write extension methods. So a lot of times we do this to encapsulate bits of logic. And sometimes we do it because we don't have access to the code. So for example, I can't add a method to string, I can't add a method to int, but I want to be able to write the code in this way, so I use an extension method. And it becomes a way of making the code look a little bit nicer. Sometimes we do it because of uh, where we want to encapsulate and, and abstract knowledge to within our application. So for example, uh, if I have a class library over here, 
person exists over here. And let's say that I have over in this code another file that we'll call constants, constants.cs. And inside of this, we're going to have a namespace that is my app. And then we're going to have a class that is called constants. And it's going to be public and it's going to be static. And it is going to have a public const. And we're going to call that uh, drinking age equals 21. So in the US, the drinking age is 21. So let's pretend that this is some kind of data that exists within this class library and not within some class library, which means the person class, if I were to try to put a method in here, cannot access that. And the reason why is my app references the class library, not the other way around. So in order to use this code that's over here, I have to make an extension. So let's go ahead and make a person extensions. .cs. And again, we're going to go ahead and create a namespace. And this one is going to be my app dot extensions. And then we're going to create a class, which actually I'm going to write public static class. And we're going to call this class person extensions. And in it, we're going to create a public static bool is of drinking age and it is going to take in a person object which we've created in our other library so I'm going to reference that library so we're gonna say this person person and I don't need to pass in anything else because the drinking age is gonna come from that constant so we're gonna go ahead and say return person dot age greater than or equal to constants dot drinking age. So now we're able to access data that clearly came from somewhere else. Let's head back over to program. Let's use a bit of string interpolation to make it a little bit nicer. Is of drinking age. Let's create our person object. var Brendan equals new person. So add the namespace, we're going to say age equals 20. So we're going to pretend that Brendan is under age uh, and is of drinking age is a method on Brendan. So we're going to say Brendan is of drinking age and it's going to come back false. So if we were to change our age to 21 and try it again, then we should get true. And we do. So the nice part about that is we're able to separate out which code gets access to which types in accessing which namespaces. So that actually helps us out quite a bit in maintaining our class libraries and distinctions of which code has which responsibilities. Very nice and useful way of using extension methods. Thank you for learning more about extension methods with us. We'll be making more of these episodes and hope to see you at our live streams on Twitch at twitch.tv slash devchatter. You can find links below. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to catch all of our Dev Chatter episodes. Happy coding, and have a great day, everyone.